Hi, this is Eric from Longbox Review at longboxreview.wordpress.com, where we review comics past and present. And today I've got uh, an old and very good friend of mine uh, who also is a longtime comic fan and uh, publishes his own reviews uh, of comics on, on the interwebs. So say hello, Travis. Hi there, everyone. So tell us, Tra- Travis, what uh, uh, pimp your, pimp your uh, review site? Pimp my review site? <laughs> um, yeah, um, I, I review things at um, Odd, <clears throat> Oddfellows Thoughts. Um, it's um, uh, Oddfellows Thoughts at WordPress.com. Um, hopefully I'll get back to being a little more consistent. Lately, I haven't been so consistent on doing reviews and whatnot. Always reading comics, but... Not, not always reviewing them, but hope to get back on track. So how long have you been reading comics? Well, reading and or collecting comics. Oh, jeez. Um, well, like a lot of us, I, I got comics when I was you know, really young. Um, so I think it's the only thing I would read as a kid. So, of course, my parents bought me lots of comics because, gosh, it'd be nice if their kid could read. Um, but um, <laughs> really, I, I got serious about collecting comics in the mid to late 80s. Um, collected for a number of years and then took a hiatus when well the real world took most of my money but um and then here in the last um you know five or six years i've gotten really back into collecting comics again and kind of picked up the stuff in between so the mid 80s that was that's kind of our golden age isn't it oh definitely definitely i don't know i'll remember back yeah I don't know what they, what do they call that you know in in comic you know you have the comic book terms they have the the golden age the silver age the bronze age I think the bronze age was pretty much up to that point where we were right. what we consider our golden age so what what do they well, call that age do you know in between does it because then it becomes what modern I mean is well that like... but but modern is that's always a sliding scale right because right now is the modern age well, okay so what are they calling that then I I don't know I I, I think maybe they're calling it. It actually depends on which like um, comic book uh, database service you use, but uh-huh. like like our, the one that we use, uh, um, Stash My Comics, right? Is that what they uh-huh. call it? Yep. Yeah. yeah, they need to sponsor this. Um, uh, they, I think they call it the Copper Age. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking too when I was just cataloging some of my stuff. Was I so was... what? What comes after Copper? Because because at some point, so whatever the Copper Age ends, or maybe it's already ended. Um, I'm sure it is because we're right now in the modern age, right? But then, as the modern age scale moves forward in time, what's what's you know like say I don't know I don't know what the copper age is, but let's say like the 2000s is like the next age, right? Uh huh. So you got you got gold, silver, bronze, copper, what nickel, zinc? Uh-huh. What, what are they going to call it? I think I think this whole <laughs> this whole metal well, uh, metal thing is really dumb. Yeah. Well, I guess I've never really. I mean, other than knowing that they're out there, I've never paid attention. Where do those breaks actually happen at? Do they actually happen in a decade? Or is it when there's a fundamental change in in how comic books are portrayed or written or whatever? It's 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 the latter for the most part, right? Because the Golden Age, well, the Silver Age started in 1956. Everybody just kind of uh, agrees that 1956 is the start because that's when the, the, the mo- well, I was going to say the modern Flash, but the Barry Allen Flash appears, right? Right. So 1956 is the start of the Silver Age. And then the Bronze Age starts pretty much, um, I'm thinking, around 76, 77, something like that. Uh-huh. Why? And I don't know. That's that's a very good question. So, I mean, I'm, the next question is, is so, <clears throat> I, mean, I mean, what, if it's, if it's something that the creators are doing or the publishers are doing that makes the change, and it's not a, it's not based on, years or whatever then I, I guess it's you can't call an age an age until after it's passed and you can go back and look at it and go oh look you know comics fundamentally changed for whatever the reason right mm-hmm. right yeah i don't know <laughs> i haven't seen anything that's that that's been maybe i'm biased <laughs> i haven't seen anything that's been that earth shattering since oh well, wait here we go i i i, I uh i googled it um, according to Wikipedia, the Bronze Age of comic books, uh, blah blah blah, usually said to run from 1970 to 1985. Oh, okay. So what happened in 1985 that was big? Um, 85, I think. 
because 85 is before I think the really big things started, in my opinion, started happening. Because 85, 85, that's before, that's before, like, you know, Watchmen and all that kind of stuff, right? And, and Dark Knight. When did yes. those come? I, yes. I think you're right. I think that well, eighty five. See, 80, that's where 86. I would say that, that's where I would say the fundamental change is that is suddenly we got we went from bright shiny heroes to uh, suddenly everybody was dark and depressed and cool. Right. So 1985, 1986. This is so according to the Wikipedia is is uh-huh. uh, the end. At this point, DC Comics completed its special event, Crisis on Infinite Earths. And then we get the whole um, sort of reboot of the DC universe. Uh-huh. Um, also, Watchmen came out about that time. Dark Knight Returns. Right. You know that right. was that was eighty six. Yeah. Oh, so okay. and then Mar- at Marvel, I guess if you if you want to consider it, this, it it was. Can you guess which which big event book they had about that same time? Secret Wars two. No, j- the original Secret Wars. That was at the same time, really. Eighty six. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I, obviously, I collected all those. And, yeah. and liked them, but do, 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 okay. So that to me seems there's such a difference between the two. It's between uh, Secret Wars and Crisis. Yes. Yes, I know. <laughs> I don't even consider Mar- uh, Secret Wars being some sort of pivotal moment for Marvel Comics. No. I mean, it was fun. Really, you 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 like that? Secret Wars. Yeah. Oh sure, I, I, but I'm a sucker for any comic that gets you know fifty or sixty heroes and villains all in the same place at the same time. To me, that's yeah. just fun. So for that aspect yeah i haven't gone back and read it i was just looking at it thinking hey i should go back and read this secret wars yeah oh wow because i mean i haven't read it at all since it came out have you no no you didn't like it then uh i did not like the art yeah i can't remember who was on who was who was doing the art at that on that series now but uh i think it was Nah, I, I don't remember. I'd have to look it up. But but you weren't interested in that? Not really. And, Did you and, get that whole series? Oh, yeah. And I got Secret Wars 2. 2, like, right. Like Why a fool. Because that? <laughs> that was awful. Least... Well, okay, now, Secret Wars did, did did change some stuff because that's when they that's when they gave Spider-Man the black costume and stuff, right? Oh, sure. Right? Mm-hmm. So that, that's important. And that changed a lot. And, and, that changed and a lot of Marvel. And the thing came out of it with his own series, and he was on some other world, and that was really good. I don't remember that. I thought you got that one. Uh-uh. The thing? Oh, no. Oh, maybe that was Greg. It had to have been. What Some, it somebody was collecting that, and I read them all at, at the ones that were out at the time. From was it me? I don't I don't collect stuff that's Fantastic Four. Like I said, I have one issue of Fantastic Four. Okay. Oh, hold on. It's why, like I said on Twitter. Why do you not collect uh, anything having to do with Fantastic Four? I don't know. It's nothing against Fantastic Four. <laughs> for whatever reason, I don't. I don't. I didn't go see the Fantastic Four movies either. You haven't seen the Fantastic Four? No, no, I, I, I saw one of them oh. because it had Jessica Alba in it. But Okay, see, I was just going to say, that's the reason I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but she's a blonde in that, and that's just no fun. Uh, are you kidding me? No. At any rate. <laughs> Her is a blonde? That is awesome. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, that's that's a, uh, that's the Bronze Age. So then, and then I don't know what the hell. If, so it's there's nothing after the Bronze Age. Well, according to this article on Wikipedia, then we have the Modern Age. So I don't know. So eighty so, eighty six eighty seven ish till twenty eleven. I don't think so. I don't, that seems like an awful long modern period. What's happened? What's happened to have changed it to be something else? If if the see, because they're saying in Wikipedia, they're saying there was some. You know, some significant stuff happened. They're listing crisis and 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 stuff as being the as being the game changer. What what's been the game changer now? You, you can't tell. You, and you know why? Because hmm. there's an event book all the time. <laughs> so everything's changing all the time. So there's so as far as that goes, is if it, if it has to do with you know the the two the two big companies doing something dramatic, where's the litmus test for that? You know. There, there isn't one because they just go from one thing to the next thing, in my opinion, obviously. But so I don't know where you're gonna where you're gonna draw a line in the sand at and say, oh, it's it's now now it's the modern age and now all that stuff before it was, you know, the nickel age, the paper age, or whatever. <laughs> the paper age. Yeah, there, it's all the paper age. Well, except for I missed that chunk of the '90s, and I don't know. I you know, hearing from some people, it wasn't necessarily a, a in some ways a positive time for comics. So no, it uh, was not. 
it created all, all those kind of bubbles and whatnot. And, okay, so what, when did you when did you stop approximately stop reading comics for an extended period? I I think I stopped in like ninety one or two. I actually have to go back and look and see for sure when it is that suddenly all of my collections take a break. And when did when did Image Comics form? Wasn't it about that same I, time period? I, I when Image Comics, um, I was not collecting comics in, when Image um, appeared. So I, I had it been before right before that, because I mean it wasn't like I mean I quit collecting comics, but it wasn't like I still didn't go into comic book stores. I remember um, going into a comic book store and there suddenly being this new company that I hadn't heard of. Yeah, it started in 1992, which means they had stuff coming out either late 92 or and then 93 and on. So yeah, you you just missed their their launch. That's not a bad thing, though, right? No, 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 not not the early stuff. <laughs> Although I hear that uh, okay, who does which is it? Silvestri that does um, the 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 green guy, Savage Dragon. No, I'm sorry. That was Eric Larson. That's Eric Larson. Yeah, Savage Dragon. I, I, all I've heard is that I, out of all of the the books that launched uh-huh. Image, that Savage Dragon was the best one, and it's still being published to this day. Yep. Or, of course, Spawn is too, but without McFarland being directly involved in it, at least for a long period of time. He, I think, maybe and it's he, changed. He was back all, in it. I mean, it's changed all the time too, right? I mean, it doesn't spin off a lot of weird little things. And, oh yeah. Yeah. So it's never really the. So you missed that whole '90s. Yep. Oh wow! All the artists deciding they wanted their own thing, and right because isn't that where Image comes out of? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I, yeah. They, I, they left Marvel, and I, I missed all of that. And I'm trying to remember right now when it was that I started picking up comic when I started collecting again. I cannot remember. Uh, I, I, I'd have to go back and look. It's all a blur. Well, you'll be able to figure that once you get through all of your your category cataloging of all your comics, right? Yeah. Should be able to. Yeah. <laughs> you know what the 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 worst thing about. Um, the, the whole image and the, the artists kind of having, you know, the, the pendulum kind of swung in, in their favor as far as influence on comics in general uh-huh. Uh-huh. was that because image was selling like hotcakes, everything that, that the guys at image were, were doing, were, were just selling like crazy. Right. Right. So of course, Marvel and DC went, Hmm, how can we tap into this? So they, they, they get artists or, tell their existing artists to start drawing like the guys at image. And you get a bunch of, a bunch of books that are coming out that, I mean, you can, you can really tell, at least I can, uh, if you pick up a comic from the nineties, you don't even have to know what the published date is. All you have to do is look at the art and go, Oh yeah, that was, that was the nineties because it all, they all seem to be the same sort of overblown style. And, and I'm you know, glad I missed it then. Oh yeah. It was, I like having a variety in my art. I didn't. I didn't collect a whole lot of comics in the '90s. I was mostly into the Vertigo stuff uh-huh. uh, at that time. I didn't get a lot of superhero stuff, but I still, you know, I got a few things over over the years, and it was just, it was just awful. Not, not, you know, not everything was awful. I mean, there was some good sure. stuff still coming out, but just in general, it's like, oh, I cannot wait for this art stuff to die down, and let's go back. And and then, and then, of course, the pendulum swing, swung the other way. And then, you know, writers were back in telling good story, well, trying to tell good stories. And, they, you know, they got they bring in different artists, you know. So it, it was nice that we got more of a balance there, I think. Yeah. And I think we're still in there. I, I th- Actually, I think now is is where we have the good balance. We, we you, get, you got these really good writers out there. You got really great artists, and they're trying to pair them up to do the right kind of project. Well, and I think the companies are, well, I don't know of all the companies. They seem to be more open to doing things a little differently so not everything has the same look well see that oh, oh it's a superhero title that therefore it's got to look like that doesn't seem to be the case so much anymore it's refreshing even, but, even if it's even if it's art that i don't like knocks my socks off it the fact that it's a little different than the other title i'm looking at makes a huge difference to me anyway mm-hmm. well it's it's interesting too you know going back to image it was it was because of that explosion in the 90s, you know, remember the, the what what is commonly commonly referred to as the speculator market. Well, oh, that was horrible. Oh God. So so because of that, we get what we have today. Yeah. You know, we, we had to go through that. Actually, but didn't that kill comics? To exactly to a certain degree. I mean, to this day, aren't, aren't comic sales the way they are because of all that? Yes, exactly. It, that big bubble. You know, we had a lot of big bubbles in the '90s. You, you remember? Well, is, yeah. Well, right. I was just, really <laughs> just reading somewhere. We talked about the fact that you know, back in the day, comic sales 
you know, that um, Jim Lee on um, X-Men was selling millions yes. of copies. And now, you know, really successful titles, they break 100,000. 100, yeah, 100,000. That's right. That's, that's, could, that's a could, successful comic. How could there be that? So is, is that because the speculators? I mean, is that everybody buying three issues of something because they think they're going to be able to sell them down the road for something else? Yeah, in part, I think. Or they're or they're really just that many comic book collectors back then there aren't now. I or, are we all, or is everyone um, stealing it online because you can get it all online for free somewhere? I, I, I hear. I think you've summed it up uh, perfectly. All it's, that stuff. Huh? It's all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, uh, that whole that period of, of the '90s, the mid to late '90s. Uh, some people refer to it. I'm look, again looking at Wikipedia, the modern age of comic books. They 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 refer to it as the dark age of comics. So I yeah I can I can see dark that is in... as as like you know the dark ages. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, there were a lot of dark comics coming out at that time, but yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah, probably is. That's probably a good description for it. I'm, I, like I said, I think I'm glad I missed it. I haven't been too excited to go back and collect things that came out during that time. No, me either. I mean, I just, I don't know. In fact, like I said, I, I know I collected a bunch of Vertigo stuff. I, you know, I was getting Sandman and and right. uh, uh, the Books of Magic, and a bunch, you know, they had a bunch of limited series all all during that time. Uh -huh. um, I cannot tell you what other kind of comics I was reading. Any any superhero well, comics? Was it Nightwing out during that time? Oh, I'm sure it was. And I, you know, you know how much I love Nightwing, so I was right. getting that. But, but it was like I, I can't, I can't think of anything in particular that that impressed me enough uh -huh. to to recall about about the superhero comics at that time. I'm sure if I if I really sat down and thought about, it, I could come up with something. But, and I'm sure there are other people that that's when they first started collecting their comics was in the '90s, and they probably think that that's great, and they think that we're a bunch of jerks for saying that it, was, <laughs> that it yes. potentially wasn't. And I'm saying it's potentially wasn't because obviously I wasn't actually collecting them. I'm just saying that when I go and look at comics there isn't anything during that era that, that seems to excite me or I hear anybody talking about, Oh my gosh, this during that time that excited them enough for me to go and look at it. What? Okay. Whereas, whereas of course I hold dearly the, you know, 84, 85 through, you know, 88 as dear and fond comic book time for me. So. Right. Well, exactly right. So p when people start, getting into comics, you know, collecting whatever, uh -huh. you know, that, that, that initial time period is always, you know, everybody, I think most people look at that as, as, as a very I, special time, right? Sure. Except the fact, I think we can um, be fortunate in saying some of the stuff that came out during our, that initial heyday of comic book collecting for us is still stuff that everyone considers significant. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you didn't start collecting until now, you know, that's the stuff everyone will refer you back to. You know those those Watchmen, those Dark Knights, that as being pivotal stuff that changed comics the way they are. Mm -hmm. That's true. Or maybe that's just me being a comic snot. No, I I think you're right. Uh, <laughs> other 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 people I I I I listen to on podcasts and whatnot, you know, that have talked about this the subject, say the same thing. You know, it's they, they look back in the the mid to late '80s as this this yeah. kind of creative renaissance in, to some degree in comics, and then of course the '90s hit and and I, that's also a creative renaissance in a, in a way, but it kind of fell apart yeah. in the mid to late nineties. And then we get, we got the crash from the bubble and then, you know, the two thousands was rebuilding comics to a certain degree. And we, although we've never gotten back to, you know, the nineties era sales. We, and they won't. No, they won't. And, and now we have digital comics. Damn. Yeah. You know, I still have digital comics I haven't read yet that I bought back when they had that sale on Batman. What? That's been six, seven, eight months ago. Really? Yep. And I still haven't read them all. Okay. What? What? Uh, why? Why not? What? What's your objection to of, digital? Because sitting in front of because sitting in front of my computer reading a comic just isn't that much fun. <laughs> oh, why not? Why? Why isn't that fun? You, you you got the art. You got the story here. It's right in front of you. A nice, clear, crisp. Uh, uh, um, pixels. Sure. What's What's the difference? It's it. I don't know. I, I can't I can't one hundred percent put my finger on it. It's just not as comfortable as being able to carry my comic book wherever I want to go, read it wherever I want to read it at. And yeah, I know you're gonna tell me I can drag around a <laughs> mobile thing, but um, I'm not gonna pay you know that kind of money for a 
for a device that all I'm doing is reading comic books on it. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Well, set set the set the money aside for a second. Let Let's say you you I give you a, an iPad. Uh huh. And and you you and you can and you can read the comics on the iPad. I, I hear now. I, I've not done it myself, but I hear uh, people who have them and do this that the reading experience. Um, of course, obviously, physically is different, but the iPad itself, the dimensions of the iPad, is very close to a modern comic book page. No, it's not. So, but whatever. <laughs> okay, we might lose a few inches. Yeah. Right from uh, height wise, but 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 it's very close. It's close enough, let's say. So, so you could take it with you. You can you can you can you know go to another room and read a comic. You can take it with you, whatever, and you can have a bunch of comics on there. That you can take with you, like on a trip or something. How is that not a, a, a good way to read comics? It, it just doesn't. It doesn't have the. It doesn't have the feel that I like of reading comics. You're it, old. It You're yes. an old man. You're right. I am. I've got, <laughs> I've got gray hair on my chin and on my temples. No <laughs> doubt about it. But um, you know, it just it it doesn't have the personality. It doesn't have the texture of reading an actual comic book does to me yeah I, I would agree with you I, you know it you know i don't have to stare at a bright light which is what you have to do reading now okay i'll say this if for some reason like the kindle which is completely different on how it how it puts out its you know its information if it were to get bigger and go in color it might be tempting maybe why the Kindle and not not the iPad? The Kindle's not backlit like like the um ah uh, you know, like the iPad and the Nook and all that kind of stuff is. I don't like staring at the screen. I can stare at the screen just fine for hours and if I'm playing video games. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, I don't like staring at the screen. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't like staring at this. You know, I just again I it, I don't like pushing a button to flip a page, and I know that on the <laughs> on the iPad supposedly you can use your finger. I don't know if you can use your finger or not. To flip a page. I think you can, yeah. With the, co with the comic book app? With yeah. the Okay, I wasn't sure. Well, I know, I know of reading some of their papers, they come that way, but I wasn't sure if it did, if it came that way. Well, I, Whereas I, now, my desktop, I, you know, I push a button to make mm -hmm. it. Make I think it. on the, I think the, at least the, the Comixology app is like that. I don't know what, what other apps there are for and, you know, comics. It impressed me so much right offhand, I can't remember what a two-page spread looks like, if it actually shows me a two-page spread. I have to open it up and look and see because I can't remember. Oh, the see, I, the digital the, comics you're, you've yeah. got? Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I have to look at one page at a time. Which I, like I said, I can't remember off the top of my head. Then that's no fun either. Yeah, you're right. The, the two-page spread is back, not good. Right? There's, there's enough comics that I like the two-page spreads in. Um, and if you can't look at those two-page spreads large, then um, you're missing something, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's true. But there you go. Now... I love the fact. I mean, if they, if they, I, I, the price point would also have to be, you know, different. The reason I bought those Batman titles is because they're all ninety nine cents. You know, so I can spend thirty dollars and have, you know, thirty plus odd titles that I wasn't going to be able to pick up otherwise. You know what's really yeah. funny? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're. Oh, I'm, I'm getting echo now. <laughs> From, oh, yeah. your, from your microphone. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, what's funny here is that your, you know, your your, your uh, objection to digital comics. Um, you've actually purchased digital comics. I have not. Oh boo! <laughs> you have no opinion then. <laughs> now, now, don't call me old. Now I have, but I have. I got. I've gotten some free ones on on Comicsology, and uh -huh. and I and I read them. Actually, I don't read them on my screen, uh, my my desktop screen. I actually read them on my my Android phone, uh -huh. which itty bitty screen for. Right. <laughs> it's not a good reading experience. I agree right. with you. Yeah. See, I have an iTouch, and I I downloaded or after I got the iTouch, I downloaded um, uh, Umbrella Academy, which I've never read. Um, got issue number one. Entertaining, but really annoying to have to look at panel by panel. Because I I think there's something to be said by opening up a comic book. And looking at the entire page. Obviously, I read it panel by panel. Mm -hmm. But the way the panels are set on the page matter, don't they? If oh, they yeah. don't, we're taking out part of the um, craft and art of what a comic book looks like. Well, see, I was just gonna, I was just going to say that because uh, you when you said re I read I read panel by panel, um, do you really? I don't. 
I, you know, I'm, I obviously I, I do to a certain degree, but I'm also I'm taking in the whole page as I'm reading the panel. Yeah. And so I, I kind of my eye skips ahead. But I do that in when I read too. I, I wow. just a, a prose book. I'll, I'll be reading the top of the page and I'll be scanning down below as I'm reading. So, but that's so you spoil you spoil I, it for yourself, huh? I do, I do actually. Um, <laughs> but so, so, I, so I'm taking in the whole page at the same time I'm focusing on that one panel. You know, to a, to a certain degree. I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm not like a super reader or anything. I can't, I can't, I can't tell you what I'm looking at exactly if I had to, right? I'm just. Just kind of taking in the whole image, and then I'm and then I'm reading the specific panels. But sure, well, and especially the comic book, it's visual. It's supposed to be that way, in my opinion. It's supposed to be that way, mm -hmm. you know. And and the panel and page layout matters. It it helps tell the story, doesn't it? It helps create a pay, helps create a pace of what's happening and draws your eye to what's most important if it's done right. Um, and doesn't make it boring but if you're looking at it literally panel by panel you can't see anything else it all looks the same doesn't it after a while well it's certain i think it deters your enjoyment of the story yeah. reading it that way i don't like it i don't like reading the comics on on my on my phone that small screen yeah no. which is which is why i i downloaded like a, i don't know close to 20 maybe a, a couple dozen Mm -hmm. And they're still sitting there. I ha I've yet to really read them, because I don't enjoy the experience on that small of a screen. But I think I would might like, you know, something like an iPad or a Kindle or whatever, you know, a bigger screen, plus being able to take those comics with me if if I'm going on a trip or something. That'd be nice. But then again, I have I have this problem with with digital copies. It's just like my music collection. You know, I have I have I have my CDs. And I put them on my computer, and I, I, I've taken the MP3 files, and I put them on my little MP3 device, and I take that with me. But I will not, my daughter does this, I will not um, just buy uh, like, like a whole album of, of an artist and uh, as an MP3 thing. We're materialist. We are, yeah. <laughs> we got to have the real thing. I can't get over the fact that... Right. That if I have this MP3, th what happens? What happens if my hard drive fails? Right. You know, I, I have backups, that's, but that, that's you know. That's how I am with you know. Well, yes and no. My understanding is is that even if I, even if I lose them, I can still go to, go to, Cosmicology, and if they're there, I purchased them. They're mine. Uh, right? That's I guess. Yeah, I, I, I assume that's true. I, I I know that when like the the online music stores started, you couldn't do that. I don't know if you can now. Where you could but just re-download them, but my understanding is is that it, you know that they 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 tweeted me and, and corrected me once when I said, "Oh my gosh, what happens if this?" And they, <laughs> they told me, "Oh no, no, oh damage control." You always, or, oh yeah, <laughs> oh sure, I don't blame them. You always you, you always have them because certainly that 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 did weigh on my thing because basically I bought those Batman to because I was missing the very beginning of Grant Morrison's um, st starting his run on on uh, Batman. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wanted to pick up those right away because I was impatiently waiting to read them now. So they had a sale, so I picked those up to read those. Um, but that was one of my questions as I was purchasing it was, um, you know, am I, do I actually own these things? And if I lose them off my computer, are they still there somewhere or, or are they gone? Which so in some ways makes them more valuable if they're actually on a database somewhere because obviously if I had a fire at my house and it burnt my comic collection down heaven forbid um there's no way I'd be able to replace it yeah even if, even if I have a dollar value realistically we all know there's no way we're going to replace it nope that's for sure you're right it's 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 just one of those uh those what am I trying to think of it's just one of those uh, concepts in my in my head you know the physical copy is the master copy and I got to have that, whether it's a comic or a CD or whatever. But you're right. It, you know, you have a fire, God, God forbid. And <laughs> all that stuff is gone. Whereas if you have electronic versions and, 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 and an online backup of some sort, you know, at least yep. you have that. But yes, I we... I can't trade digital comics, though, either. I can't trade digital comics. I can't loan you my digital <laughs> comics. It's all that, too. Yeah. Hey, I, you know, I mean, 
I, you know, back in the day, I read a lot of your comics that I don't own, and I'll be and vice versa. That's something, whatever. I'll go, oh, I remember that story, and I'll go to look for it. And I don't own it, and then it occurs to me, oh, <laughs> I never owned it. I read yours, which yeah. I don't know. Then there's that whole stealing thing. You get into that whole, you know, people putting comic books out on the internet for everybody to read and whatnot, which I, you know, I don't agree with. But obviously, I guess you know, reading your comics is to some degree that it, you know. Okay, so. I'm glad you brought that up. Actually, there there was a discussion about this very thing on 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 the Comic Geek Speak podcast, and one of the guys on there, um, Brian Deemer, he 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 has interesting ideas about many things, and this was one of them. He he brought this up, and it caused like a, a big discussion thread on on their forum. Uh huh. And when I when I heard it, I was like, this guy is just crazy because he he's saying that that the whole back issue. Um, model of comics, you know, going and buying back issues is is we shouldn't be doing it because it takes money away from the creators. And and then we and then they started talking about uh, well, what about you know I buy a comic and I give you I give it to you to read, you know that's the same thing to to him is that because I've given it you to to you to read, then the, the creator isn't getting his cut of uh, of the of the sale of the comic, and 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 then it also ties into the whole you know digitizing comics, and putting them out there for people to read. You know they're they're, they're cutting into the sales. I mean that's really what uh, the the whole the whole uh, copyright and and ownership issue aside. You know it, it kind of, it really comes down to um, someone's giving you something for free that you should be buying, right? Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> I don't 100% agree with. Uh, well, whole, exactly. Yeah, I don't. I don't with, with with that whole concept. I mean, because part of the idea of, of back issues, um, like in the, from a retail standpoint, and selling those, you have to do something that's going to help keep your um, retailer selling your product, right? Mm -hmm. And back issues is one of the ways to do that. Yeah, you're right. Um, you know, single single issues, the creator's not getting anything for that. You know, once it's being resold however many times um you know, that, that that is true but that's that way with everything mm -hmm. everything right. so I, every, every, used anything is, is that way right i mean that's just the same as if i donate something to goodwill and somebody else buys it there the people who manufactured in the first place obviously aren't getting a second sale on the thing that's right so i that whole part of the argument i think is moot yeah I, it, i don't think it has any bearing at all yeah. um yeah, but but the, but as far as like us sharing comics as we used to do, and actually we still do that with right. with, with trades, right? Sure. Um, uh, you know, it, it's still my copy. You're just borrowing it. I get it back. Right. It's not like you. It's not like you somehow get another copy of it and and, I, and I, breaking I, I, copyright. Right. Yeah, I don't know. That's that, that's yeah. It's kind of a sticky thing. I, but I I hate pirates. <laughs> <laughs> the passion. I, I, mean, I, I, I yeah, you know, I've never ever downloaded anything that I hadn't purchased, and um, I think it's pretty criminal to rob um, creators of it. And I know people will say, "Well, if I wouldn't have downloaded that one copy, I wouldn't have known how good this was." And now I'm buying X number of issues or whatever. You know, I went back and bought the whole thing or whatever. Well, you should have just spent the, you know, two or three dollars. And bought the single issue that got you inspired in the first place, and then went back and purchased everything. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, if you can't risk, you know, if you can't risk those couple bucks, then uh, you know, whatever. I don't know that. To me, that seems a, a pretty weak um, excuse. And I know, I know certain people that will probably listen to this and they'll throw a fit when they hear that. So, really, you think so? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, besides the criminals people, that are actually people, doing it, me and you know. If they choose to listen to this, yes, they will have a fit. Really? Yep. <laughs> we'll have to talk about this offline. <laughs> Only because I'm curious. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so what? Uh, uh, we are now uh, an hour and 20 minutes into talking about stuff. Uh -huh. So we should probably wrap it up here pretty soon. But okay. um, I want to ask you a few more questions. Uh, so what right now? What are you reading? What what uh, not 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 your entire list, but what is, what what's like your 
your favorite top three or five things that you're reading right now? Um, Secret Six is probably my favorite comic right now. Mm. Guaranteed, when it comes in, it's the first thing I read. And I read it probably within minutes of opening up my box of comics. Uh, Secret Six. Besides Secret Six, um, Six Gun is another one that I read almost immediately. You when and I, you and you never talk about this on Twitter or anywhere else. Never, never, ever talk about that. <laughs> I love that comic. You know, I, I like Secret Six too. I think Secret Six has got a much bigger fan base, so I don't feel like I need to beat the drum quite so hard with that. But um, mm-hmm. um, I think people are foolish to be missing out on the Six Gun. I just think it's a great comic. Um, it's definitely it definitely has a, a really cool concept yep yep and and i i like the pace of it it never feels slow i never read along go what are we when are we getting to something you know what's the point of this um you know it all seems relevant to the story um it's appropriate pretty much for everybody to read um i just yeah i'm excited about that comic book and i push it as much as i can everywhere i can so um uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure Oni Press appreciates that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, the last comic convention I was at, I was, I was, I was probably selling it harder than they were. They were pretty amused. <laughs> I, I, I was there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, their whole thing was, is no, he is not an employee of ours. You know, no, he's not getting any money from us. But, uh, Did they actually say that? Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, so what? Ahead. So okay. So you were at the Oni booth at Emerald yep. City. Yeah. And people were coming by looking at there, stuff. People were, there, the one particular, this one guy came up, he goes, hey, I don't really know any press. You know, what's good for any press and why would I be excited about and it? And Travis jumps in front and of him, shakes him by the shoulders and says, read Sixth Gun. Awful close to that. <laughs> the, the, the lead editor, he was there and he started to go, well, and I go, I interrupt him and I go, the book you have to buy is this book. <laughs> and they're giving you a money back guarantee because I know there's no way you're going to give the book back after you buy it the first trade. And 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 if you give it back or think it's not worth it, you know, you're crazy and you don't know a good comic. Sense. <laughs> oh, you gotta be careful. And, and the lead editor shrugged his shoulders and went, "Well, I can't say much more than that." <laughs> and I and I pushed what, a few more while I was there. Well, he he didn't he didn't turn to you and say, "Would you like a job?" No, unfortunately, he didn't. He should have. You know, I'm hoping that if I ever. You know, if I ever actually write that comic book story and whatnot, I'll I'll be that'll be part of my in. I helped I helped sell you a lot of. <laughs> so you should help me publish this. Oh yeah, right? there you go. Yeah, I like that publishing company anyway. I, well, they publish their stuff I like too. So it's it certainly put them on on my map. Yeah. Because I I you know I knew of Oni Press and I, you know I've looked at stuff, but I I never got interested in, in anything until this this title. So. Yeah. So that's that's two. Um. Birds of Prey, it's been kind of shaky uh, up until now. Now they've got supposedly a, a ongoing artist. The first book that he's on, um, issue 12, is just awesome. I won't talk about it because I know you haven't read it yet. Oh, but... Jesus Saiz, yes. Oh, man. Yeah, it just makes the comic so much better, just the consistency of, you know, of it and whatnot. Yeah. You I... know, and um, um, Gail Simone is brought a character over that she used in um um the secret six that oh really oh yeah i, I, I won't say much more because it's okay but it's good I will, it, it's gonna I be will read that it's gonna be wow um well, i remember uh seeing jesus saiz's work on uh brave and the bold from a couple of years ago right and thought man they need to get this guy on a major book because yeah. he is awesome yeah his his work has gotten I mean, a lot better in the last couple of years. Um, really? If I, well, if I remember correctly, he he was on, um, and I'm, probably after I say this, I'll be wrong. Uh, he was doing Manhunter for a while. Oh. And it was a you know a darker a darker uh, comic, and the art was darker on it and stuff. Um, it will. I'm not sure how to describe it. It wasn't as clear as what as what it is now uh-huh. as what his work is now. It was a little muddier. It wasn't bad, but I like it much. I like it better now. Yeah. I'm I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, it looks as good as as I remember from his Brave and the Bold work. I'm yeah. not sure if it's if it's his pencils or the or if it's the inker that makes it look a little different. But yeah, it looks very nice. Who is inking that book? Which? 
Bri- uh, Birds of Prey. Birds of Prey now? Uh, oh, it's him. Right. He does all the art. He does. Oh, that's nice. He does all the art. Yeah, so the only, di- the only difference would be is, um, you know, the colorist. Yep. Who's been coloring all of the Birds of Prey books? Oh, I don't know. Oh, she has. Oh, oh, she has. Uh, Nay or Nye Rafino? Yeah. Nye Rafino? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I talked with her at Animal City Comic Con. Oh. Yeah. Because I was curious if she was, because I know she had done the coloring for all of the stuff and what it was like for her to color so much different types of stuff, which she didn't seem to think was that big a deal. But. You know you know what? I, I've been paying a lot more attention to, to color artists and, and you know, the, the, the coloring of comic books in general. Uh-huh. And, and I think it's so vastly improved in the last, I don't know, decade. It's digital for you, I think. Well, probably, but it, it the, well, everything now, looks so good. Well, well, yeah. And the other thing is, is there's a lot less inking doesn't always make the shadowing now they can they can do much more texture with color than what they used to oh, you know, from right. back in the day and it makes a big difference i think in the comic and the way the comic looks so do you think maybe because like 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 i just said jesus jesus Saiz, uh is the artist and uh, you know he does inks and pencils and fraser irving from zombie is also does everything doing doing his own i think he does the coloring does, too yeah he does everything. But, but you know, maybe maybe the the improved color artistry in comics is is making or paving the way for more artists to do their own you know everything from from pencils to inking, uh, you know the the more more of the finished product than than just giving someone pencils and someone inks it and then someone gives that well, to the color I artist. I certainly and, think I certainly think that those who work totally digitally um, probably are most of the case because mm-hmm. I mean. All it takes to ink, a, 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 um, in some cases, to ink digitally is to push a button, and it goes from being a, a fine faded line to, you know, a dark line. Um, so I think that, to some degree, that um, can remove the inker. Mm-hmm. I know some inkers have talked about the fact that theirs is a dying art. Well, that yeah, that's kind of what I was getting at. I was, I'm wondering if if inkers are yeah. become, going to be coming be becoming uh, uh, a rare um, maybe in twenty person years. working in comics. Maybe in 20 years, there's still enough people who use who who do work on paper that there'll be inkers, you know. And until those artists get so old that they can't do art anymore, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's always, there's always going to be inkers. Mm-hmm. That's true. So I mean, I you know. Yeah, 20 years is probably a good time frame for for a, a big well, change. Well, that gives those people who are 60 now <laughs> until they're 80, you know. And I would I would think by then maybe <laughs> they aren't going to be doing so much comic book art. Um, <laughs> Of course, you know some of them. Some of them are moved over, you know, digitally too. So, you know, I don't know. Well, we got a bunch of uh, what I'm what I refer to as the old guard uh, doing the like those DC retrospectives. Yawn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to some of them. Uh, okay, I guess this is for me. If I want to go back and read those old comics in that old style, <laughs> I got lots of boxes of them, and yeah, I know I, I can, uh... you know, probably find the. Somewhat local comic book store that's got lots of back issues that I could buy, whatever. I, I don't know. I, it seems to me a lot of energy being spent on, nostalgia. on not moving forward. Yeah, nostalgia. Right. Which which, I'm, we, which DC has too much of right now. I I would I would agree with that, but I Anything at the same time canceled, everything old is just being. Yeah, that's true. Up. Yeah, I I agree with you on that point, but I also I like that old stuff. I I I, I like to see what the what you know like. Uh, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, you know, I look, he, he I look was... forward. I, I look forward to talking to you about how disappointed you are in these. Comments. <laughs> oh, that's going to be great. I can't wait for that conversation. And I'm sure you're right. I'm sure I'll be disappointed. I'm, I'm looking at the, at this stuff with, with rose colored glasses. Yep. And like I say, uh, Garcia Lopez on art, you know, I loved his stuff back in the seventies. He did a lot of the DC comics present stuff. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think, I just think he's one of the, the, one of the more underrated artists, um, in comics, so I'm looking forward to that and some other things. You know, uh, some of the some of the writers, Denny O'Neill coming back to do some stuff. I, I loved his. Danny stuff. O'Neill, let's let's talk about that for a second. What was that Batman title you picked up? Uh, just recently that he was doing, and we all thought, oh, Danny O'Neill on Batman again. That's gonna be awesome. What was that miniseries? I don't know. You don't remember? Mm. Just just came out, and I don't think you collected the whole thing. I know I didn't get it because I was thinking about. No, are you referring to Neil Adams? On Batman Odyssey? 
maybe that's what it was. Yeah, that, yeah. Take it back. See, yes. you're right. You see, that's a perfect example because I well, love Neil Adams stuff back from in the 70s and 80s. But yeah, yeah this this stuff, eh, not so much. But, but, but at the same time, it was the writing of the story that really turned me off as opposed to the art. Oh, uh, okay. So it was him writing that, that story. It's like, oh, this is not very good. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, I see your point, and I will probably agree with you ninety-seven percent. Well, I just don't see why we couldn't have paid those guys to do something new. I well, with some with somebody new. But it is new. It, this is new stuff. It's not. It's not reprints. It's just done in a different style. Okay, so done in a different style. Is it telling <laughs> new stories? I mean, not. not I'm not saying new. I don't mean like a story we haven't heard before. But is it telling us? now stories or is it going back and telling us stories that happened back in the 70s or 80s or 90s i yes i believe that's the case it's it's so going, then it's going, not a new story it may be a new story but it's not <laughs> it's it's not they're a new gonna, story, but it's a new story they're gonna add some bitter piece to something that i guarantee is somebody's not gonna be happy with I, you're probably right just just like that just like that um gms story where um wonder woman and zantana both know that um Barbara is going to get shot and oh. lose the ability to walk. Right. Horrible story. Okay. We could we we should talk about yes. that some other time. <laughs> we could spend an hour and a half just talking about that. So. We should. We could do that. Okay. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm going to ask you one more, maybe two more questions, and then and then we can we can uh, end this. Okay. Um. Uh. Okay. Just real quick. Uh. Who's your favorite comic book character? Man, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, that's like you know, favorite this or that. There's no, I mean, there's there's lots of characters I like. You're, you know, so you're not saying diff- Green Arrow immediately. I, I definitely have an affinity for Green Arrow. It's always the top of my list of people to to say. And why? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can completely. You know, I'm not 100 percent excited with the current Green Arrow. Mm-hmm. I like Ollie. Um, I like that he has, you know. The flaws, a lot of the flaws of a common man and whatnot, but still manages to be the hero. Um, but yeah, he's he's one of my favorites. I like John Constantine. He amuses me too. He's so not you, a superhero, but I do like him. Are you liking? Uh, I, I've not been reading that comic, so but I've been hearing some things about it. Are you liking the the whole? Is is it is it is it Pete Milligan back on the yes. title writing? Yes, it? and it rocks. It, okay. it is so good right now, man. I'm I'm loving it. I, I really wish I would have picked up when when Milligan started again on that yeah. on that title. Yeah. Because it because it uh, as I as I read I think uh, they're writing or he's writing Milligan's writing Constantine mm-hmm. as um, uh, in real time like he's he's aging and yep. there's some sort of he's getting married and he's he's married he okay is, yep he, but, he is married but it's and, good yeah. oh yeah yeah it's it's awesome okay. there's there's some there's some scenes in that book that just oh they're so great. He, he currently he's well he's got his he's got a thumb back but he ended up cutting off his thumb a few months ago yeah i heard about that yeah yeah and there's an artist that has his thumb and uses it as artistic inspiration oh wow and he sucks on it oh god the severed thumb oh it's <laughs> so awesome <laughs> oh it's just great but no it's those are those are great stuff i, I you know i i'm not I'll, I'll try anything that milligan writes um, you know, for a while, and I'll stick it out for a while because he's always got something good, interesting to say about stuff. And and um, but the, yeah, the Hellblazer. I, I've always liked the character. You know, um, you know, that's one comic I've been. Other than the, the brief time I wasn't collecting comics, I've always collected that comic because I've always liked the character. Um, so wait, wait, so so you you kept getting that comic through that no, time period? No, you no, did it's not. The, it's the it, 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 I did not wanted to, but I did not. But it is a comic that I have. Since it, number, issue number one, I've always collected any time I've been purchasing comics. Ah, okay. And I fully intend on going back and picking up those issues. That yeah. At some yeah. Point. I'm actually trying to do the same thing for the – because I, I got I got issue number one, as you did, back when it was first published. Uh-huh. And then I, you know, and then I got, uh, I, I got into Sandman at the same time. Uh-huh. And, but, I, but, the, but the Constantine title didn't really interest me all that much, foolishly, I Silly thought. Silly you, Yes. Yes. So then, but then, you know, as you were reading it and telling me how good it was and, and, you know, based on stuff I was hearing, I picked it up around issue 50 uh-huh. and, then, and then went through a good chunk of it, I think maybe to issue 100 or so or, or something like that. But uh-huh. I missed, I missed issue two through, f- I think, 48 or something like that. 
Right. Because I, I, I was able to get a few issues before that. But anyway, I've been that's that's my goal is to get all those those older issues, um, uh, to to get that from number one to whatever it was I ended on hundred or whatever. So mm-hmm. I have that that big chunk of it, and then I wanna I wanna start getting the trades of the more recent storylines. It's good. I enjoy it. Okay. All right. So final question for you. This this is the dreaded one, right? Probably. <laughs> which 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 comic book character would you most want to date? Only one. Oh, okay. If, if, no, you can have more than one if you want. You I, I, swinger. No. God, yeah, man, that's it. You playboy. All at the same time. Yeah. Um, I, you know, man, I don't. That that is a hard one. Um, I I'm I'm gonna say right now I'm gonna I'm gonna say Huntress. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. I thought of her too. My, my wife tells me all the birds of prey, but <laughs> yeah. But could you imagine going out with with Dinah? That'd be intimidating. I, they're all intimidating. Well, that's true. Well, yeah, Helena would be in- intimidating too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. I thought of her as well, Huntress. When I yeah. when I was thinking, how would I answer this question? Yeah. But I, I would go with uh, – there are actually two other ones that I, that I would I, – I thought of as well. And one is, one is Dove. You know, you know my, my love for that character. Yeah. I don't know why, but yeah. Okay. Shut up, man. She's pretty. Okay. Sure. <laughs> and Donna Troy. Oh, yeah. I have been in love with that character since New Teen Titans back in the 80s. So, yeah. yeah. Starfire would also be a good you know, choice <laughs> as well. For uh, obvious reasons, but sure, sure. So for, uh, 13, for all the thirteen-year-old reasons, yeah. <laughs> you know, Dick Grayson was a lucky, lucky man during that time period. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So wait, so you you said hunters? You, you said uh, may, there might be a couple other ones though. Well, I mean, you like well, besides we, besides all of the birds of prey. The birds of prey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I I wonder one. You know, I know that's, you know, to some degree stereotypical and whatnot. Sure. Um, but I thought of her, too, except for when she's really awfully written. She's, you know, you know, beyond being gorgeous is, you know, interesting. Yes. I mean, because she obviously comes from a completely different perspective on everything. You know, I guess it depends on what I wanted out of the date. You see, she <laughs> prefaced it that way because, oh. you know, then we could get off on all other kinds of things. Well, now, I didn't say hook up with. I said, who oh. you most like to date. And and I realize that now that I say that I, I I realize that what does date mean may be different from from what from our generation as opposed right. to say my the, the kids of my daughter's age. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, Travis, this has been tremendous amounts of fun for me. It's definitely been entertaining. But you know, you know me, I can go on forever and ever. So. <laughs> well, and and I hope. My hope here is that we could do this on on a somewhat regular basis because uh, I know there's lots to talk about, um, and you have a lot of things to say about various things. So, yep, as as do I. <laughs> <laughs> but mostly, I like uh, I just you know I I love chatting uh, about this stuff with you. So, yep. I hope we can do this again. Anytime. All right. Uh, so why don't you uh, let's remind the folks who have stuck around this long with us. <laughs> Tell them again. Uh, your your website and if you want your your Twitter handle because you you post a lot of stuff about comics on there. Oh yeah, um, the, the, yes. Once again, my website is Oddfellows Thoughts and that is um, Oddfellows Thoughts dot WordPress dot com and um, my Twitter handle of course is at the underscore Gaunt underscore Man. Hook me up anytime and I'll. I'll, I'll talk with most people about just about whatever. So. And you and you do you talk to quite a few people uh, yeah. uh, over over Twitter about comics and and stuff. So, yeah. yep, they should definitely check you out. Um, and in case people uh, mistype or whatever, I have a link on on Longbox Review uh, to your website as well, so they can they can they can access it from there. Okay. Um, all right, Travis, thank you very much. Thank you. And talk to you later. I, I will. I definitely will do that. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. 
Remember to visit Longbox Review at longboxreview.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter. It's at Longbox Review. You can also email me directly at longboxreview at gmail.com. And we're also on Facebook. All this information can be found on the website. Thanks for listening.